Twitch being an incredibly popular streaming site, basically only second to YouTube, along with having seemingly a good enough API, has led to a lot of third-party tools existing. One of those categories of tools is a third-party chat client, and we're going to be looking at one of those in particular. This is Chatterino. Now, there is another really popular option on Linux known as Chatty, but from my experience, my very brief experience with it, Chatterino is a little bit better out of the box, but sometime in the future, we'll probably probably be looking at Chatty as well. Now, when you first open up Chatterino, obviously Critical's chat isn't going to be here, that's just here for the sake of demonstration. It's going to look a little bit more like this instead. At least that's once you've gone and signed into your account. So, the first thing you need to do is go and manage your accounts and add a Twitch account. Now, I've got mine in here. It's a very simple process. Basically, all you do is you go to the link it shows you, you sign in with your Twitch, it'll give you a OAuth key to use, and then you paste it back in the application and you're pretty much good to go. Once you've done that, then you can actually access stuff with Chatterino. Now, while I can make the text bigger in the chat window itself, there's not a way to do so, at least that I've seen, to do that with the rest of the interface, so the text today is going to look a little bit small. But ignoring that problem, if we want to go and add something into this empty window, all we need to do is just click anywhere in the empty space. Then it's going to prompt you to add either a channel, whispers, mentions, watching, or live. Now, with channel, make sure you get the name exactly correct. So in the case of critical here, make sure you actually include the one that is in his name, because this doesn't actually have a search feature. So I've actually go and just include, you know, moist critical, spelling it the way that you'd think if you forget there's a one in his name, it's going to connect to some other random person's account that uses that name. Or in some cases, if the name isn't taken, it's not going to be able to find anything. The easiest way to get that name would be to just go to the Twitch account, grab the name from the URL, and then go back to the client like that. So if I want to use my account, I can just stick my name up there. And as we'll see, it is connected just fine. If I go and send something here, if we then go over to Twitch, as we can see, that is loaded just fine. While you're probably only going to be watching one stream at a time, that doesn't mean you only want a single window open here. Let's say, for example, you want to keep your mentions as well. So if we want to add something new now, clicking in this empty space is no longer going to work. What we need to do instead is click the plus in the top right hand corner. That is going to give us an empty space. Then we can do the exact same thing again. So in my case, let's go and add the mentions. And now we have a tab here where if someone mentioned me, that would then be included there. And you can add as many of these as you want. But by default, it's going to add them in this, I guess, column layout, which might be fine in some cases, but maybe you have a vertical monitor, or maybe you just want to change up the way the space is actually being used. Luckily, we can go and move stuff around and do resizing. So there's a couple of ways this can be done, but the easiest way to do this is by holding down the Alt key and then dragging the window you want to move. So let's say I want this one above this one here, let go of it there, and now it's added. But we don't just have to keep them in this fairly basic layout like this. I could go and add this one above all of the others, or this one below all of the others as well. Now, it's also going to go and resize stuff for you when you move stuff around, but maybe you don't want it sized the way it's going to size it. In that case, if we go and hold down the control key, this will go and highlight all of the borders. Then we can go and resize stuff basically as we want to. And there is one more option we have to move stuff around, but this is more of a combination of moving and also adding. So if we go and hold down Control and Alt, this is going to go and bring up an interface where you can go and grab stuff, move it basically where you want it to be moved, but you also have the option to go and add something in any of these spaces. So I can go and click this one here, it'll split this one in half, or I can add one here that'll split that down the middle there, and basically it just makes it much, much easier to go and add stuff rather than going and clicking the plus here and moving it to where you need it to be. One thing I probably should mention mention is changing the type of window when the window has already been made. So there's two ways to do that. Either we can go and double click on the header bar. That'll bring up the exact same option we had when we were creating them earlier. Or we can go and right click and click on change channel. Or the other option is being focused on that window and pressing control R. 
Maybe having this tabbed interface with these splits in them isn't that useful if you only watch like one Twitch streamer, but one of the advantages of having these separate tabs is you can go and keep all of these separate chats open, and then when you want to go and watch that streamer, that chat is already there for you. All you need to do is just go to that window and everything you wanted to be there is already going to be there. I like to keep a main chat window though and also a live window. This basically just tells me whenever someone goes live. Now by default, the tab name is going to be determined by what is actually inside of that tab. So this tab right here only has the live window, so that is just going to be the name of the tab. But you might notice with the other one we were using before, that one says Brody Robertson plays, and then just after that, you might notice it starts saying slash mention. So to address this problem, all we need to do is go and right click on the tab, and then we can go and rename it to whatever we want to name it. So let's say just Brody Robertson plays, and now it has a much cleaner name. It's not a big deal, but when you have a bunch of extra tabs, it can kind of get a little bit confusing. Now, moving away from this interface stuff, let's talk about the chat experience itself. Now, as I've mentioned, Chat Arena is strictly just a Twitch chat client. You're not going to be watching a Twitch stream inside of this window, but it does provide some useful utilities to actually get to the Twitch stream if you already have the chat open. So if we go and right click up the top here, this will give you the option to go and open the stream inside of your browser. This will take you to the regular page you would see that has the chat on the side, but because we're we've got the chat here anyway, we don't actually need to see this window. So instead of coming to this one, let's instead go over to open player in browser, and this will just open up the Twitch player and not have the, uh, the chat on the side. But if you use the program stream link to go and watch a Twitch stream inside of something like MPV, that is also in the list as well. I don't use that, so I can't really speak for how well stream link actually works, but I have been meaning to test it out for a video. If you've ever used Twitch, one of the things you'd realize basically straight away is a massive part of Twitch culture is the emotes. So if someone sends an emote in chat, if you go and hover over that, it's going to tell you what the emote is called so you can actually use it for yourself, where the emote is from. So if it's a sub emote and you don't have a sub, you would realize, oh, I can't actually use that emote. And if it's from something like FFZ or better Twitch TV, it's even going to tell you who actually made that emote. Now, if you want to send an emote, all you need to do is include the name in chat, as you might expect. But there's also this icon in the bottom right of the window here that's going to bring up a list of all of the emotes you currently have access to. So for this channel, I don't have any sub emotes, but there are also some channel emotes, there are some global Twitch emotes, and also as general emojis in here if that's what you want to send instead. But there is one other method to send an emote. So if we go and include a colon in chat, this is going to bring up a drop down menu that then you can start searching for something. Let's say I want to send like the pog emote. Then you can go and select that, and it will actually go and include the name you need to use to actually send that in chat. And you may have spotted this earlier, but under the channel emotes, if the channel does have better Twitch TV and Frankface Z emotes, that is going to be included as well. If this wasn't supported, there would be literally no reason to use this client. And if for whatever reason you need to ping someone in chat, first include an at symbol, then you'll get a drop down list of all the people currently in chat, selecting a name in here or searching for something and then selecting it is going to go and add the name you need to use. Before we get into the moderation section, if you're just a regular user who's not actually running the stream, if you go under the settings here, there is this ignore section where if someone's, you know, talking about something you don't want to hear or you just don't want to see messages from certain users, you can go and basically hide what is being said by those people. Along with this, if you don't want to see highlights for certain type of messages, let's say, for example, you don't want to see subs being highlighted, you can go and change the color for that, maybe change it to something less annoying, or just straight up disable that highlighting and no longer have to even pay attention to it being there. Now, because I am a streamer, I obviously want to be able to access some level of moderation tools. Otherwise, there's no point me using this while I'm actually streaming. So because I'm not streaming right now, obviously, I can't show you it with my stream. But there is a bug where I can show you the buttons actually working, even though this isn't going to give you moderation privileges in the account. Uh, if you go to an account where you actually have moderation privileges 
accessible basically, you can go and enable it there and then go back to a different channel and it won't disable it, so it will keep the buttons there. Obviously, I can't go and like time people out or delete messages, but I can show you the buttons actually existing. So next to all of the messages here, we see a ban button, timeout, and also delete message. Now, these are the buttons that I want to use, but these are not the only buttons that are accessible. So this can actually be customized. You may want to have like a, I don't know, a six and a half minute timeout or whatever else you want. Or maybe you want to have the timeout and delete message on opposite side from each other. So what we need to do is go to the settings menu, go to the moderation section, then go to the moderation buttons. Basically, all of these buttons are bound to some command. So I've got slash ban user, slash timeout user 300, slash delete, and then message ID. But if I go and take this, and let's say I add another one, let's make this one also a ban. As we can see, as we're changing these, it's actually going and adding in different buttons we may want to use. So let's go and change this one to be 600, for example. And now there is a 10 minute timer in there and you can basically customize this as you want to see it. And I don't know if this is a bug, but I'm going to consider it a feature because it is very useful. We can actually go and add in a button and then not give it a command to run. Then we have a gap between the buttons. I'm going to assume that's intentional just so if you want to have a gap there, you can have a gap there, but I'm not entirely sure. Now, there are other commands you can use, and the documentation of those can be found right here. Um, I don't really see any reason to use many of the other commands. Basically, everything that I want to see is already being done by these buttons, but maybe you want to have something like opening up that player's card, for example, or something else like that. And there is a ton of other little things you can go and mess with. For example, let's say you want to have a command where if you write slash uh, discord, it will post your discord link. Well, that is something you can do in here. Or maybe there's someone in your chat you want to give a nickname to that only you can see. Maybe they're being an asshole and you want to give them a nickname that basically matches. And that's without even getting into the general usability settings. We can go and modify the interface, or maybe if you go and hover on chat, you can make it pause for a couple of seconds. You can change whether you want smooth scrolling or smooth scrolling when there are new messages. You can go and modify the way that message times are displayed. And there's a bunch of other of these like little things that you can basically customize your chat experience to be the exact way that you want it to be. I honestly think Chatterino is an amazing program. I could probably spend like an extra 15 or 20 minutes just talking about all of the extra little things you can go and mess around with. If you are a very heavy Twitch user and you want to customize the chat experience to be exactly the way you want it to be and you want to not have to be on the Twitch website just to deal with chat, this probably is one of the best options you can go with. As I mentioned at the start though, there is another program known as Chatty, and I will be looking at that at some point in the future. Maybe my opinion will change then, but for now, I don't see any reason not to recommend Chatterino. So I think that's going to be it for me then. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.